Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> right. Hi, I'm Sarah Snell Pym, and I am a scientific artist, or an artistic scientist. Actually, I'm mostly an artist these days. And I'm going to start by inflicting a poem on you. <laughs> They say I am a polymath, a genius. Well, how about that? With my distraction, oh, glitter! <laughs> and the attention span of plankton, ADHD, me, a genius. How'd that come to be? Slittering thoughts here and there, filtering concepts without care, ideas fall into haphazard intellectual snares. Match, music, history, a little of all, but distracted by a new mystery. Writing, drawing, biology, skipping from subject to subject. Who? Soliloquy. Craft, textiles, drama, tech, boogie with friends of the DJ decks, in trouble with sir, as atoms on the canvas burst, what could be worse? It was supposed to be a portrait of my dad. But art teachers don't like such newfangled fads. But I do DNA equations and that. Science teacher was just the same. My creativity was their bane. And instead of notes, goldfish, I explored. No, a dog drawing each gill and scale. Focus girl was her well, but I still managed to answer her questions, narrowly escaping the need for detention. GCSE's is done, cut for progress one. I turned my attention to A-levels, but not for long. Imagination bouncing around loose, climbing archery songs. Well, they said my CV needed a boost. Guides, scouts, first aid, voluntary work, upcycle bags and jeans to be made with the old, young and unable. Oh, my best friend's parents went and got cable! Oh, friends, neighbours, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, side by an horroring, cheesy lyric, reading books as I walk home. Sir, getting the boyfriend I'd left hanging on the phone. Walks with dad, learning forest law, weaving nettles, chainsaws, looking after campus galore. Hey, what? Wait, how did that happen? I'm only 17. What do you mean I'm in charge? Oh well, I'd better be that large. I should be studying for my exams. Oh, peanut butter and ham. Why that look? I got mad. I'm only doing four. At A level, they said I couldn't do more. What a bore. Snow, snow. Carl, look at that niche. Was you call it cute? I'll show them what I can do. Short courses at lunchtime, of course, and not dreaming over I can do dandyism. Um, that would be naughty. Oh, I'm writing a novel too, researching and learning. Oh no, look, the pizza's burning. Then it was off to uni, with people being sneaky. Learning about rocks, losing socks, sucking lollipops <laughs> whilst doing <laughs> whilst doing assignments at the door. I get paid for Chim T V and perform the first bit the odd bit of first aid in the quite common emergency. Going to Kenya seeing stars, pretty beads for me to wear. Ooh, is she a labour over there? Acting um seeing picnics. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Hospitals and med supplies, braces made by me for you. Acting, singing, prancing on stage, looking through a microscope all day. Pretty rocks and electrons rock. Caving, dancing, pizza, romancing, kung fu, physio too. What do you mean pay attention for? Ooh, a rainbow. Where's the camera? Singing in lab is banned. What a tanker. Teaching posh kids to cook, writing poems in a nook, seeing the beauty unfolding of molecules that make rocks by folding. Oh, how that happened? Street scene in the margin. Still, I got down the formulae, so it's a good mental bargain. But I've lost the plot today. Deserts and dunes. A poem about reality in the moon. Then it was marriage and kids. Plus the biggest ever thing. I was told now I would have to focus. What a load of hocus pocus. Kids, they've got the same attention span as me. <laughs> and they like it all victory. We make things, bake things, make watch documentaries. ADHD is the polymath dream. I'm thinking on maths and trying to see when the thought of cake pops, pops onto the scene. Cake pops. Science, science fundamentals, universal truth, glitter and proof. Oh, cake that's spherical! <laughs> science, cake, cake, science, bingo, 
bang bong, science cake is born. Cake pots, edible molly mods. Here is Buckminster Fullery. The icing is dairy free buttercream. <laughs> <laughs> and so, true to form, after writing the poem and having rather a lot of um, cakes to eat, I started to dwell once, once more on the element carbon. Now, Buckminster Fullery, as mentioned at the end of the poem, is the third polymorph of carbon. It is affectionately known as a buckyball and to, uh, due to the 60 carbons forming themselves into a ball or sphere. There are three polymorphs of carbon. If you're a chemist, think aleotrope is not quite right, but you'll have to just deal with it. <laughs> this means there are three arrangements of the atoms that occur when you get a lot of carbons together to form a lattice. It depends on the temperature and pressure. The first is graphite. which is planar in nature. The carbon atoms are formed into flattish sheets or hexagons, or fused benzene rings. These sheets or lattices sit on top of each other, but they are only held, to, held together between the sheets by weak van der Waal forces. This means the sheets can move around and slide over each other. This makes carbon's first polymorph a rather good lubricant, but <laughs> only for industrial purposes. <laughs> Right. Or, if you are like me, you will mostly use graphite by encasing it in wood with a point of graphite exposed. You place this on dry, flattened wood or cotton pulp and shear off bits of the pencil lead, making grey smudges. Sometimes, people even pay me to do this. <laughs> the second carbon polymorph is not coal. Coal is a rock type, not coal. <laughs> it is not a pure carbon form. It has lots of things like sulfur in it. No. And the next polymorph is diamond. Now the diamond lattice is a beautiful thing. It is made of tetrahedrons. Now, these are basically three-sided pyramids with an atom at each corner and one in the middle. The tetrahedrons stick together to make the structure of the diamond hard. It is one of the hardest substances and as such is used to polish things other polishes won't touch. The industrial applications are fantastic, especially as they include crushing and cutting. However, most people think of diamonds as just bling. Due to the large amounts of money involved, growing your own diamonds is big business, but only it would appear if you pass it off as natural. Synthetic diamonds are pretty much perfect. Pure carbon, exact pressures and temperatures, natural diamonds have impurities. So even if they look clear, and perfect, they aren't. So, forgers have spent years working out how to imperfect the perfect for maximum effect. I personally have a man-made engagement ring. The diamonds glittered just as nicely and it was a lot less money. And as to the old adage that diamonds are a girl's best friend, well this is true for me, but not because of the glitch, because of engraving. Mostly glass and ceramics, it's great for artwork. <coughs> and lastly, and in a most poetically circular nature, that brings us back to Bucky Balls. Here is my knitted Bucky Ball. <laughs> right? Pass it around yourself. Oh dear. <laughs> Have a look at the structure. Right, it is a basically a spherical cage of two strings. The rings are five or six carbons that fit together in the same way that the liver patches on the football are so. This is what gives it its name. As it looks like the polymath Richard Fuller's geodesic dome. Bucky balls are everywhere it turns out. There are even trace amounts of it in suits, soot, the knowledge of which earned me some autographs. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> they are also present in deep space meteorites, which has many implications for those studying cosmochemistry. But this loveliest of molecules wasn't actually discovered until I was four years old. That's um, 1985. And it sparked a whole new branch of chemistry, as buckyballs were just the start of the first carbon cages. There are nano bucky, bucky tubes called nanotubes and all sorts. And I have also heard from those in the know that it is in this direction that nanotech may lay. And so, I shall leave you with the statement, All hail the buckyball! Carbon in one of its most majestic forms. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah Snowbrim, ladies and gentlemen!